Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. Today we're talking about shoes. But first, I want to celebrate! This is the 40th episode of the Trash Imagination podcast. Hooray! When I started this just over a year ago, I wondered if I would love making a podcast. And I'm happy to say it's definitely a source of creative energy, so I'm going to continue to do it. It gave me a reason to deep dive on topics that I had only skimmed before. The most popular episodes have been the creative reuse of trophies from January 2017, trash fashion from April 2017, and the mattresses and bed springs episode from March 2017. Hopefully today's episode is just as useful to you. I have come to realize that my goal for this podcast is to be your creative reuse pep talk. So here's your pep talk about the creative reuse of shoes. In 2013, I read an article by Wen Li from the Center for the New American Dream about shoes. Wen noted that the average American man owned 12 pairs of shoes, and the average American woman owned 27 pairs. She didn't think of herself as a shoe person, but when she did an audit, she found she owned 15 pairs of shoes. Inspired by her example, I recently did a shoe audit. I expected to find that I had even more than the national average. And it's not because I love shoes, but because I tend to hold on to shoes thinking that I can wear them when I'm doing muddy yard work or other tasks where I don't want to wear nicer shoes. And guess what? I was right. I own 33 pairs of shoes. So this week I started working on finding ways to creatively reuse them. The first task I undertook was to photograph the nicer pairs that I don't wear and then to post them on my local community sharing board, which is called Buy Nothing Reston. I thought I would be able to put up maybe five or six pairs of shoes, but actually there was only two pairs that were in good enough shape to do that. And I have just given away one pair this morning. I found that actually a bunch of the shoes, like five pairs, were kind of rotted inside. These were more the fancy shoes that I never wear. And so those I will end up bringing to my local My Organic Market because they have a box where you can bring all kinds of shoes and then they mail those to a program called Planet Aid. The nice shoes are shipped overseas to be sold in support of sustainable development programs. And the worn out shoes are reprocessed into pillow stuffing, carpet padding, wiping cloths, and other products. Now, if you had more shoes that were in good shape, another option might be to take them to a consignment shop. My mother-in-law said that she had a couple of pairs of fancy shoes that she knew would be very popular, but that she found she was never wearing them. So she did bring them to a local consignment shop and they did sell. Now, there's lots of organizations that actually take the worn out shoes other than Planet Aid. For example, there's the Moore Foundation Group. Their website says that they plant trees and train farmers using the profits from gently used running shoes. And I checked to see if they had a local place where I could bring them. I found that my local YMCA was a collection site. Another organization that recycles shoes is called Souls for Souls. That's S-O-L-E-S number four, S-O-U-L-S. And they have drop-off locations through my local Got Junk provider. I also found that my local running stores, uh, the Potomac River Running and Pacers, collect used running shoes for charities. Now, when I first researched uh, the creative reuse of shoes more than 15 years ago, there were no drop-off locations for used worn-out shoes. You could take your nice shoes to the thrift shop, but this is a relatively new option. Back then, the only option I found was a program called the Reuse a Shoe Program that was sponsored by Nike. And Nike grinds up worn-out running shoes to make play surfaces using a technology that they call Nike Grind. 
Not every Nike store takes used shoes, but there is a website where you can go and see if the one near you does collect them. I also researched Crocs.、Uh, I noted that Crocs are not made from plastic; they're made from some proprietary material. Some people think they're made from plastic and that they could be put in the recycling bin, but that is not the case. And unfortunately, the manufacturer does not offer a recycling program. Now, if your Crocs are in good shape, you could put them at a thrift store, or you could also donate your Crocs to the same shoe. Recycling programs that I just mentioned. I'll also touch on flip flops, which are a particularly big problem for our oceans.、Uh, they are such a popular type of footwear around the world because they are cheap, but most of them are made with something a PVC, which is a mostly non-recyclable plastic. And many flip flops contain materials to soften the plastic, which are toxic. Burning this type of plastic causes health problems for the people who live nearby. Now there are some companies who make flip flops from 100% rubber, and this is considered to be a better option. So that's the information I have about the actual recycling of shoes. Now I'm going to talk about projects that you could undertake that would reuse the shoes. I looked for projects on Pinterest, and the most common ideas involved flower pots or bird houses from old shoes and boots. It's not a project I would likely do, just because I don't tend to decorate with that kind of aesthetic. Although I did see the flower in the croc looked pretty nice, and you know, crocs have kind of large holes in them to keep the soil from falling out through the holes. You could line it with the mesh from produce bags. So I liked that because it was creatively reusing the croc and the produce bags. I also saw a few projects that involved making shoes from recycled materials, especially slippers from blue jeans. If you'd rather buy slippers that are made from blue jeans, I found an Etsy store where you can buy them, and I'll put a link to it in the show notes. The company was called Intua Design, and it's a Finnish company. Now, for old flip flops, I saw projects where you can cut up the foamy type of flip flops to make rubber stamps. I also saw there were tutorials for what you could do if your shoes are nice and they fit you, but they're just not what you want right now. There seems to be a lot of projects about painting canvas shoes with fabric paint, or adding some nice bling or broken jewelry、uh, to high heels. For inspiration, you can check out the hashtag #shoeart on Instagram. I also saw projects for middle school and high school art classes, where students decorate a pair of canvas shoes in the style of a famous artist, and that's a, a curriculum that's offered by DickBlick.com, and I'll link to that curriculum for art teachers out there. So next, I want to share some stories about artists who creatively reuse shoes. My absolute favorite shoe recycling artist is from my home province of Nova Scotia, Canada, and her name is Kim Danio. Now, I saw Kim's work for the first time when I was visiting Nova Scotia last summer, and I went to the art gallery of Nova Scotia, and she had some of her work in the gift shop. She sculpts shoes and boots into A myriad of items, including famous buildings, pets,、uh, other animals, pastries, etc. I particularly love her birds; they're quite hilarious. She takes high heels, and the heel, pointy heel part, forms the beak. I I hope that you will follow her on Instagram for a bit of humor in your feed. A few years ago, I saw the work of Kenyan artists at Ocean Soul at the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. Now they are doing amazing work. They gather flip flops from the beaches in Kenya and they glue them together and sculpt them into beautiful animals. And I bought a little sea turtle from them. I'll share a video of their process, which is quite impressive and making a big difference、uh, on the beaches in Kenya. 
Now, while Kim Danio and Ocean Soul transform shoes into art every day in their process, there are also many artists who incorporate shoes into impactful art installations without changing the form of the shoes. And these are really powerful examples that I'll share, and I I hope you will go to the show notes and see videos of these installations. So a few episodes ago, I mentioned the artist Shiharu Shiota, who was using recycled luggage in one of her art installations, and she also incorporates shoes. One piece called Over the Continents featured almost 400 pairs of shoes tied with red yarn, and the yarn traveled in straight lines to a single point. She asked people who gave her the shoes to write notes explaining the importance of those shoes in their life. She got the idea when she returned to Japan after living abroad for a long time. She said that at first it was comforting, but then she realized she didn't really fit in, and it was kind of like putting on old shoes. Another artist, Tyree Guyton, is from Detroit, and in 2011, he installed a piece called Street Folk with 10,000 shoes, and he placed them over a city block to bring attention to the plight of the homeless population. In Seoul, Korea last year, Hwang Ji Hai installed a piece called Shoe Tree made of 30,000 shoes. She built this installation to celebrate the opening of a new park called Solo 7017. Uh, This park creatively reuses a road and closes it off for just pedestrians. It reminded me of the High Line in New York, which is a park made by creatively reusing a rail line. Elena Chauvet created an installation called Zapatos Royo, showing red women's shoes. The installation had the theme of gender violence and femicide. It started with 33 pairs of shoes, but grew over time, and it appeared in various cities around the world. Shaka Gotbag is a photographer and sculptor who arranges many everyday materials into eye-catching geometric shapes. He has a piece called Guests, too, which involves many pairs of shoes lined up along a wall, but the toes are cut off and then spread out across the floor. Noemi Lackmeyer made a piece called Experiment in Happiness, which is a giant ball covered in about 400 pairs of yellow shoes. She lies on the floor with her feet inside one of the pairs of shoes, and she describes the piece as somewhere between comical and menacing. Now, the last Trash Imagination podcast episode was about the creative reuse of fruit stickers. And artist Noah Scalin does impressive sculptures with stickers. He also makes sculptures from thrifted clothing and shoes. I loved his portrait of Martin Luther King last month made from shoes. Now, the way I'll finish this podcast is talking about buying shoes with the least environmental impact. So this podcast is about creative reuse, and I generally don't focus on purchasing advice. I will include in the show notes a great video by Ethical Consumer that outlines what to keep in mind when purchasing shoes. And if we buy shoes that are better and more ethically made, it's likely that we'll have fewer shoes to creatively reuse, and that would be great. If you have creatively reused shoes in an unusual way, please let me know at trashmagination at gmail.com. So I hope you will celebrate this 40th episode by leaving a review of this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. If you like getting a creative reuse pep talk a few times per month, it is really important to show your support. It doesn't even require money. It just involves writing a few words. Now, maybe you feel shy and you're not sure what to write or you don't like writing. Don't worry. It can be something very simple and I will still greatly appreciate it. Just share which episode inspired you the most. Your review shows social proof or evidence that people like this content. I'm spending many hours making this content because I want to lift your spirits. So please lift mine with a few words of encouragement. Until next time, may you see trash as a source of art in your life.